It's that time of year again. JD Power has just released its dependability study. It doesn't really measure dependability. It measures infotainment woes more than anything nowadays. But regardless, Lexus and Kia are kicking butt and taking names in 2023. Let's get into it. <laughs> Over automotive news, they break it down for us beautifully. Key is also at the top for the mass market brands, and they also held that position last year, and Lexus is back at the top where they usually sit. And they're saying that even though the brands overall, premium as well as mass market, are getting more reliable, the gap between premium and mass market reliability is widening. That's because premium and luxury cars have more technology in them. So before we get into the list, I know you guys want to see it and all the, the vehicles. We need to talk about what this list and what this study is actually representing. The JD Power Vehicle Dependability Study tracks problems per 100 vehicles over a 12-month period by owners of three-year-old vehicles. So we're all looking at vehicles in 2020. And that will actually play into some vehicles favor we'll talk about in a little bit. The 2023 study examined vehicles from the 2020 model year in terms of quality component replacement and appeal. Infotainment technology continues to be a sticking point for many automakers representing twice as many problems as the next largest category. Like infotainment is not going to stop your car from running at probably 99% of the time. It has nothing to do with dependability. The infotainment issues really comes down to user expectation, a lot of user error, simple to use menus, touch pads, rotary dials, touch screens, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There are a lot of issues here also with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto because six of the top 10 problems relate to infotainment, including voice recognition, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto Connect. Activity. So when you're talking about third-party software, you're also having another device in the situation, which might not be the car's fault. So it's a very gray area that JD Power likes to incorporate into dependability. The average person on the market, when they think dependability, they think a car that doesn't break down and is very cheap to own and operate as it gets older. So we're looking at three-year-old cars here, 2020 model year. Lexus is the highest once again. BD not Genesis. So Genesis right on their coattails in second place. Kia, the number one mass market brand with 152 and then Buick right behind them. I mean, Buick's not really a premium or a luxury brand, but they're a step up in some ways than Chevy. So it's kind of hard to say, but interestingly, Chevy and Buick, right? Pretty much identical cars. But if you look at Kia and Hyundai, also pretty much identical cars. Hyundai, where are they? Hyundai is down a few more spots. Okay, so they're not that far back from Kia. That's good to see. Mitsubishi, a lot of people would never own a Mitsubishi for a lot of different reasons, but apparently a three-year-old Mitsubishi has been dependable and reliable. Toyota, uh, also back on the list just a little bit, definitely well above the industry average here, but Toyota has been much higher on this list in previous years, but falling behind a lot of its rivals. Okay, so it's right there with Hyundai essentially. Many, many ranks high with dependability, but we got to keep in mind that infotainment is the most heavily weighted thing here, more than likely. Okay, Nissan up there as well. I got the Nissan Altima SR this week to drive. It's actually kind of fun. So I'm going to make a video comparing the refreshed Nissan Altima to the all new Honda Accord, especially the hybrid. So definitely stay stay tuned for that like, like comparison review. Anyways, Dodge up there as well. Cadillac, Mazda beating the industry average. Then we have GMC. And so all these numbers, it is how many problems per 100 vehicles. I don't think I mentioned that. And BMW rounding out the list above the industry average with 184 problems per 100 vehicles. Now we're getting below average dependability here. Ram, Jeep, right? They're pretty much the same company, Stellantis, FCA, what do you want to call them? Uh, we also have Honda falling below the industry average, Infinity, Porsche. Now, Porsche is interesting because in the past, they've also been ranked right up at the top with Lexus before in dependability. Acura below them, then Subaru, then Volvo, then Volkswagen, Chrysler. The funny thing, we have Chrysler, um, which is quite a ways behind Jeep and Ram. 
Uh, Chrysler has a lot of issues, I would say, with their minivan, the Pacifica, especially the plug-in hybrid one. So the, lots of recalls on that. Jaguar back there as well. Mercedes-Benz high-tech vehicles we're talking about at this point. For though not necessarily the case, but Audi is, Lincoln is high-tech, Land Rover absolutely high-tech, and has by far the most problems per 100 vehicles. And Tesla's the first time on the list, but Tesla doesn't meet the criteria. Tesla doesn't allow all the information for their, their owners in certain states. So they're kind of an outlier here in terms of reliability of information here. But we know that Tesla does have issues with their infotainment and build quality, etc. Of course, they're not the only one. So let's get into individual vehicles here. Most dependable vehicles. Uh, the Lexus RX comes in at number one. The Toyota CHR, rest in peace, canceled after this year in the United States. It lives on in other markets. But the Lexus RX, what happened to it in 2020? Well, it went from the touchpad. No, did it have a mouse? No, it had a touchpad. It went from the touchpad to the touchscreen. It's still not the new software in 2020, but it was a massive upgrade. So you could use the center 12-inch screen as a touchscreen. Even the smaller screens, you could use a touchscreen as well. And then you finally had Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integration on the RX then as well. So that was a big breakthrough for Lexus. And obviously, the infotainment seems to be pretty reliable for them. Also, the CHR, I guess, yeah, there's not a lot of things to go wrong in that car. It's very simple. Uh, we're going to miss it for sure. It's kind of replaced by the Corolla Cross anyways. All right, compact car. Kia Forte, Corolla, and Elantra are in that list. Compact premium car, BMW 4 Series, Volvo S60, and BMW 3 Series. The Lexus IS is not listed here, probably because it had uh, a touchpad instead of the touchscreen. That's no longer the case. They put it in, I think, in 2021, they gave the, they gave the IS touchscreen. Uh, compact sporty car, there's only one vehicle on the list. It's like they created this... <laughs> segment just for many. Uh, anyways, we're going to keep moving. Mid-size car, Kia Optima, Chevy Malibu, Ford Fusion, all be out the, the Japanese, the Ultima, Honda Accord, as well as the Toyota Camry. Let me know. Would you guys pick? Well, Optima is not even made anymore. Well, it is, but it's a K5. They don't even use Optima anymore. Anyways, we're going to keep moving. Compact SUV, Kia Sportage, Buick Envision, Jeep Cherokee. Compact premium SUV, Lexus NX. Okay, so this this was in the second half of it. My, my Husky keeps bothering me because the door has been shut in here. He really wants to get out. He's going to have to wait a couple minutes before I finish this video. So Lexus NX, number one premium SUV, Cadillac XT4, and then BMW X3, large SUV, uh, Chevy Tahoe, GMC Yukon. Notice that, let's say the Sequoia is not in here, but the Sequoia in 2020 was a very simple vehicle, big V8, tiny screen, huge rotary dials for climate control. I'm surprised that's not on this list. And, since, and it was super old in 2020, the Sequoia was, so I don't know why it wouldn't be in here for dependability. We know that the, the Sequoia can run a very, very long time. But again, this is mainly an infotainment test. Okay, Chevy Blazer, midsize SUVs, Hyundai Santa Fe, and Ford Edge. <laughs> He's complaining. Midsize premium SUV, the Lexus RX and Lexus GX. <laughs> Small SUV. We already mentioned the CHR. We also have the Buick Encore and then the Chevy Trax, which is the same vehicle as the Encore. Small premium SUV. Uh, the Lexus UX isn't on this list, and it could have been because it was about the same year, the first year the UX was fully on the market. All right. Upper midsize SUV, Highlander on this list, Sorento, as well as a 4Runner. Um, I would take the 4Runner into a post-apocalyptic world, not necessarily the other two, even though uh, the Highlanders, there's a lot of old Highlanders still on the roads. Anyways, ups, upper midsize premium SUV, X5, XT6, Volvo XC90. Um, I'm surprised the Acura MDX isn't on this list. And a large heavy-duty pickup truck. There's just one. That's a Silverado HD. Light-duty pickup, GMC Sierra, as well as the Tundra. No Ford mention there. Tacoma is number one for the mid-size pickup trucks and Sienna number one for the minivans. So Toyota Motor Corp took home six model awards, the most of all brands, including the Lexus lineup. So you have the NX, RX, CHR, Highlander, Sienna, and Tacoma. And let's not forget all of their uh, second and third place finishes as well. BMW received four segment awards, 4 Series, X2, X5, and Mini Cooper. General Motors took home four awards as well for Blazer, Silverado HD, Tahoe, and GMC Sierra. 
Remember, the Silverado HD as well as the Mini Cooper were in a category of their own. There were, were no other direct competitors, at least with respectable reliability. Hyundai had three segment winners with the Forte Optima and Sportage. And for Tesla, this is the first time they're included with scoring 242 problems per 100 vehicles, but the brand remains unranked because Tesla doesn't allow JD Power access to owner information in states where that permission is required by law. Anyways, I love updating you guys on this list. And since Lexus was mentioned quite heavily here, the Lexus NX is updated for Europe for a couple small... Okay, I can't... He's looking at me with a puppy dog eyes. I got to let him out. Okay, so the NX for 2023. So the NX for 2023 gets this new Panasonic derived Nano X air purification system. It has new multimedia and audio options and new exterior color modifications. And we also have the Mark Levinson audio system for the first time on luxury grade plug-in hybrid model. The key fob also gets upgraded to ultra wideband keyless technology. Front wheel drive option now available on luxury grade hybrid. We don't see any front wheel drive hybrids here in North America. They are all the all wheel drive uh, variants. We also have predictive efficient drive, which optimizes battery usage on selected hybrid and plug-in hybrid models. I'm surprised it wasn't on the NX hybrid when it debuted on the market. Uh, I think it's on the new RX, but we first saw it on the Lexus UX hybrid when that debuted. So reading through this, it doesn't look like the screen's really been upgraded that much. Maybe some software in the background, but it doesn't stand out to me. Um, the interior gets, I guess, black and rich cream interior upgrade as well as um, you have a new colored glove box and console side panel and door trim and for the driver we have a revised switch layout on the center console making operations more intuitive the redesigned nx has been out since late 2021 so it's a little over a year it still seems brand new i don't see that many of them out there on the market i spoke to one of my ends in the lexus dealership network and he said that the hybrids are really highly sought after, especially for the NX and RX. So the demand is super high for them and Lexus just isn't able to provide them. But I got to end it there. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more industry auto news. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe for more, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Peace.